show you uh, where, where do I need to point? Nutrition and nutrition and the brain. So these are ten categories or ten hits that can, if you have four of these, it can cause um, depression or mental illness. If you have four of these, and um, last night um, they were review a little bit. It's about um, the, the I'm going to read them. It's the uh, genetic factor, developmental, and let me just say genetic means if you have parents that have suffered depression you are uh, 1.5 to 3 times more likely to suffer depression. So it's a factor right there. The way that you were um, raised, and uh, that's the developmental, um, if you were uh, raised by only one parent, if you didn't have parents at all, um, the way that they treat you, you know, uh, that's an another factor. Lifestyle, um, that includes everything, our nutrition, our um, uh, habits of exercise, our um, habits of sleep, all that is included in lifestyle. Circadian rhythm, our sleeping patterns. That's another factor, another hit for uh, depression addictions. Um, talking about um, not only illicit drugs, but also addictions to good things, or if I can call it that way, let's say sugar, work, you know, other things that can be um, uh, called addictions, nutrition, that's what we're going to talk about this morning, toxicity, social complicated stress and grief, social relationships, not having a good relationship with a family member or having a, a, a problem with a friend, um, also a medical condition, and also the frontal lobe, and that's what we talked um, last night about it. So, um, nutrition is probably the most overlooked cause of depression because our brains are so god made it so um so well if i can say it that way that even if we are deficient in certain nutrients for our brain our brain can function not potentially as it should be but it can function so people say well i am feeling well nothing's going on with me but actually um it can actually um, um work better if we give that the necessary nutrients um can have profound effects. And um, my husband mentioned that there was a study that um, was kind of a study. They, they went to a prison and they separated two groups. Uh, to one group, they gave them omega-3, which is one of the nutrients for the brain, and to the other group, they gave them a placebo. So they realized that the group that had the omega-3, they were more cooperative, less fights, they were happier, more content, than the group that didn't have the plus, that, that didn't have the omega three, so it actually can have a profound impact in our brain, in our mood. Um, once the nutrition change is adopted, it takes about seven to ten days to begin notice the difference, and then the improvement is gradual and it picks up to three to six months. How do I know? if I am not giving my brain the nutrition that, that it needs. Now, if you go to your, to your pantry um, at home and you have a lot of um, junk food or meat, then that will, can be a clue. That, that will give you a clue that probably you're not giving your brain enough nutrition. Signs of um, carbohydrates addict. If you are all through the day eating um, sugar, any type of sugar, you know, I see sometimes in, in our clinic, some of the staff members have their candy there and they are just getting a little piece of candy and then they are um, 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 taking another piece because what happens is that sugar temporarily increases uh, the brain's serotonin levels. So we're gonna learn serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It actually helps with the mood and it makes us feel good. So the sugar elevates serotonin and it makes us feel better. But once the sugar is already metabolized, then you again feel tired and you again feel anxious. So what do you want to do? Get another piece of sugar, uh, of candy, so that you can feel again, serotonin levels go up, you feel good, and then the process goes over and over again and you, you, you become addict, sugar addict. Mm -hmm. 
Also, another uh, sign that we are not giving enough um, nutrition to the brain is low, low serum B12 or folate. So if you go to a lab and you uh, draw blood and your um, folate or B12 um, or B complex is low, that's another sign. And often there are no obvious clues present. Now, what is the first one we're going to talk about? The first nutrient that our brain needs is called tryptophan. So tryptophan is an amino acid. So what's an amino acid? The proteins that we get from our diet are built up um, with um, amino acids. They are the, the chains or the little round things that form a chain. They are, they are um, one, the blocks per se, and they build the protein. So when we get our meals, the um, proteins get digested. They separate the amino acids and the amino acids go and travel and, and travel to, through the um, blood to the blood to every place, and then that way the body can use it, right? So tryptophan is converted into a neurotransmitter called serotonin in the brain. And we talked a little bit about serotonin. Serotonin is in turn active in areas associated with eating behaviors, passivity, violence addiction, and depression. However, tryptophan and serotonin are also involved with many areas of cognition. Important, tryptophan is very important that we have it in our diet. Now, serotonin, talking a little bit more about uh, serotonin, enables brain cells and other nervous system cells to communicate with each other. Serotonin, so what is a um, neurotransmitter? So yesterday, my husband um, taught uh, a little bit about what um, how the nervous system works. So our nervous system in our brain and you know all the ramifications in our body are constructed um, with neurons. Neurons is the type of cells of our uh, nervous system. So they look like a little flower. So you got the, the, the head, which is the flower, and it's got the stem. So the end of the stem is connected to another flower, and then it's got another stem and another flower and so forth until they, they form the whole line of nervous. But they do not touch each other. They communicate with substances called neurotransmitters. If we do not have those neurotransmitters, then neurons cannot communicate well. So guess what? Our nervous system is not going to uh, function well. Our brain cannot um, function correctly. And we, will be we won't be able to cope with stress. We won't be able to do all these things. So that's why um, tryptophan is just so important. Serotonin also helps with sleeping, eating, and digestion. However, if the brain has too little serotonin, it may lead to depression. Um, serotonin helps regulate, regulate your mood naturally. When your serotonin levels, levels are at an abnormal level, you should feel more focused, emotionally stable, happier, and calmer. And um, that's talking about uh, tryptophan. It's just because it helps to uh, the production of serotonin, and serotonin is just so important. Where do I find tryptophan, right? So the whole milk has got a little bit of um, uh, tryptophan, 46 milligrams per 100 grams of uh, milk. Black eye cow peas has got 267 uh, tri uh, tryptophan. Walnuts, 290. Almonds 322, sesame seeds um, 258. I don't know if you guys have um, tasted um, um, hummus. Hummus is uh, made with the um, chickpeas, right? And they use tahini, but you need to use a lot of tahini. So that is that it's got a, a lot of tryptophan. Gluten flour 510 milligrams of tryptophan per 100 grams of gluten flour. So it, it's been known that um, gluten flour it causes um, digestive problems to a certain uh, percentage of our population, but not everybody has that. So, the, for those who do not have that problem, it's okay to to have gluten. Um, roasted pumpkin seeds, 578, but look at that. Tofu is got 747 uh, milligrams of tryptophan per 100 grams of tofu. It's a lot. The the little humble soybeans. They have a lot of nutrition right there. So that's where we can find our um, tryptophan. Talking about omega-3, 
That's the, the next one that we uh, need to make sure our brains are fed with. Uh, patients receiving omega-3 supplements had a significant longer period of remission from illness, talking about depression, than the placebo group. Patients receiving omega-3 supplements or also are displaying considerable improvement on test assessing levels of depression and other bipolar symptoms. People with bipolar symptoms are very, uh, uh, they, benefit, they benefit themselves by getting omega-3. And um, as you might know, those are very difficult illnesses and it, to treat is just, just the bipolar people are one way so loving and so kind and so, oh, so pleasant to be with. And then just the next day they are just violent and, and, and oh, so terrible. But even them are benefited with omega-3. So um, let me see. So where do we find omega-3? And probably the first thing we hear about omega-3 is fish, isn't it? Because yes, fish does have a lot of omega-3, but the problem with obtaining our omega-3 uh, through a fish, um, through uh, oil or the, you know, whatever they use it to, to obtain it from, um, is that in the ocean um, there are many um, pollution. And that pollution has a lot of um, heavy metals, like mercury, um, and other ones, the, the, the mercury is the big one, because when the fish comes and eat the algae, they got the mercury on. When we eat the fish, we get the mercury, and the mercury is a heavy metal that are, is not gonna um, be easy to um, take out our body. It just stays in there. So it can cause mental problems and, and, and damage all the, our system. So. Um, let me show you. Here, the fish is actually a good source of omega-3. Uh, I don't know many of these. I know that tuna has got 170, it's got 930. And probably salmon, that's another one I know, 1,710 uh, milligrams of omega-3. And I don't know the others. But they do have a lot of omega-3. But if we cannot obtain our omega-3 from, from a fish, where do we find it, right? So let me show you right here this um, table. The almonds, just a quarter cup, it's got 136 milligrams of omega-3. So when you got your, um, your almond milk, you're getting omega-3. Um, spinach can, one cup, 257 milligrams of omega-3. Who, who would have thought that spinach has omega-3, but it does have. So in our salads, we can put our salads with all, all those greens, and you will get omega-3. Green soybean, 637, just for um, one um, cup. Soybean oil, just one tablespoon of, um, of um, uh, soybean oil, it's got 927 milligrams. Then you have the wheat germ oil, uh, again, just one tablespoon is one, 938. Now, walnuts, black and English is what? Just a, a quarter cup of them, which means you are doing four or five of those walnuts, you are getting 1,034 and 1,703 milligrams of omega-3. But the one that beats them all is the flat seed or the linen seed oil. With only one tablespoon, you are getting more than whatever fish you can find out there of omega-3. It's got 7,526 milligrams of omega-3. It's oh, it's just, it blows my mind. God put it there for us to just being able to get what we need for our brains. So how can you get it? In the morning, when um, you are ready to take your breakfast, just have your uh, flaxseed meal, uh, um, and, and, and um, you can keep it in the refrigerator. Just put one tablespoon on a cup, and you, put, you can put a little bit of juice, or you can um, blend some strawberries, or blend some um, um, grapes in a little bit of water. You put it in there, you mix it, and right, right away just drink it because if you let it sit, it will kind of be slimy. Yes, 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 yes. So that's one way of taking it. You're taking your daily dose of omega-3 by just doing uh, your omega-3 with absolutely no side effects, no heavy metals, no fat, no nothing that it will damage your body. 
So this is another recipe that you can do since walnuts and flaxseed are the ones that have more omega-3 than anything. You can mix a quarter cup of walnut ground and a quarter cup of flaxseed meal and then uh, one tablespoon of date sugar or brown sugar and an eighth teaspoon of salt and you mix it all and then you can put it on your toast, on your cereal, you can put it um, in, in anything you will like in your breakfast and you're getting a lot, a lot of omega-3 there. Now it's, um, it's good to, you can buy it, the, the, uh, the flaxseed already uh, grounded and making it like in a meal, in a meal form. Uh, but if you want probably to do the best, it will be to get in the seeds, have a coffee grinder, and then grind your own. And then that way you will have it fresh um, than just having it, you know, um, getting at, at the store already grinded. All right, the next one, it will be the folates. Folates, uh, some of the important uh, functions of folates are in the creation of DNA and RNA. Um, our bodies are constantly regenerating themselves. Our skin is, do we have new skin every three days? The skin that we have today is not the same that we had three days ago. It, it um, exfoliates. So they are constantly creating new cells. Our body is just constantly regener regenerating. And, and for that, they need the folates to create um, the new genetic information in the DNA and RNA. Um, this also happens in um, the formation um, of the baby, the nervous system. So that's why pregnant women, they need to have folates as a supplement because the baby is, is getting from all the nervous uh, system, so they need that. Folate is also known to help with depression, mental fatigue, and irritability because it can be quickly broken down and supply the body with energy, with energy. So folates are another nutrient that we need to provide our um, bodies with. So where do we find it? So meat, the cereal steak, it has um, 16 micrograms, so it's really little. Uh, Parmesh, raw slices, it's got uh, 44. Pineapple juice, 58 micrograms. Fresh orange juice, 75. Spanish peanuts raw, um, 88. Uh, mustard beans raw 105, spinach raw 109, navy beans 255, okra pots frozen 269, and lentils 839. A lot of it. Lentils. Um, black eyed, um, black eyed cow peas. It beats them all. 1,057 micrograms of folate in just one cup. And they're so easy to cook. They are uh, like lentils. They are very soft, so they will cook fast. And you can just season them and, and have them once a week. You're getting a lot of folates um, with the uh, black eyed peas. Okay, um, we are going to talk about a little bit about um, atherosclerosis. And the reason that we will do that is because what atherosclerosis does is it can create micro ischemia in the brain or other parts of our body, which means that certain parts of our, our body they will not have oxygen. If they don't have oxygen, what happens? Well, they die. They die. So um, that happens when, um, when a person has a uh, stroke or a heart attack or a pulmonary embolism or whatever. You know, the big ones, when they get blocked, then um, the oxygen cannot come in because blood is the one that carries oxygen. So the, if the blood cannot flow through that area of the heart or that area of the brain, then the brain dies. So that's what is called um, heart attacks or it's called um, uh, strokes, right? But that can happen anywhere. And it takes years for those big arteries to be blocked, to have a, a, a diet full of cholesterol, full of um, unhealthy fats. So, um, our, our um, blood needs to flow really with no dis um, interruption or with no disturbance. So when you are watering the plants, you know for sure when the, the hose is uh, twisted, right? Because the, the water um, comes in a, a splashy way, right? So in our vessels, our um, blood needs to flow with no disturbances, in no, no splashy way. 
So what happens when we are consuming um, cholesterol is that the cholesterol does get digested and then it goes to the bloodstream and then it gets the, the deposited in the inner um, layer of the uh, vessels, the, the vessels. I don't know if I said it correctly. But anyway, so once it's deposited there, it starts making turbulence in the blood. So the, the, the system says, danger, danger, because when we get caught, there's turbulence. So the body will produce um, clots, and then platelets will come and attach to that clot and make a, a clot. So then that way we won't be, um, the, you know, the, how do you say it? Yes, yes the, the blood won't, yes, exactly. We won't be led to death, right? That is the natural thing God made it that way. But when there is a disturbance inside the, the, the vessels, what happens is that the, the, the same mechanism, it happens the same. The, the body says it's danger, danger. So they start um, uh, forming clots um, and they start forming um, the platelets come and attach to it. And if that clot gets um, loose from that area, it starts to travel in the blood system and the vessels are big and then small, 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 small until they get the thickness of a hair they, they are so tiny, so little. So in the place where that one gets stuck, whatever it was after that, you know, any tissue that it was after that, it's gonna be dead. So that happens with big uh, areas of our body, but it also happens with small ones. So our brain is full of, um, full of uh, capillaries that uh, are, are bringing oxygen to our, to our brains. So if we have cholesterol in our diet and if we have atherosclerosis, we can have micro um, embolisms in our brain per se. So if that happens, then our, our nervous system is not gonna work, uh, work well, our brain is not gonna function well. So we need to try to not um, eat any of that. Um, our body needs cholesterol, but our body produces it itself. We don't need it from any uh, outsource of um, of our food. So, um, so where there is cholesterol and where there is no cholesterol. So what can we eat, right? So fruits, grains, nuts, and vegetables, zero cholesterol. So don't worry about eating fruits, nuts, and vegetables. You, eat, you can eat as much as you want. You're not gonna get cholesterol in those. Um, the milk, non-fat, just one cup is got four grams of cholesterol. The 2% is got 18. The whole milk is got 33. Eight ones doesn't have cholesterol. Um, it's, it's the yolk that has got a lot of cholesterol in there. Mayonnaise is got eight because it's got eggs. Ice cream, 29 of cholesterol. The good thing is that we can go to the store and if we are not gonna buy regular um, ice cream, we can get um, um, ice cream made out of uh, coconut milk or made out of, uh, the, 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 they don't have eggs or even oats. And it is, they, they taste really good. So we can still have that treat, if you like, at home without worrying getting cholesterol in there. Um, butter, just one tablespoon. Maybe we use one tablespoon to put in our, in our toast, isn't it? We're getting 39 milligrams of cholesterol um, in, in that. Then we have one egg, that large one, 213 milligrams of cholesterol, a lot of it in the yolk. Tuna, 26 clams, 57 crab, crabs, um, 64 chicken breast with no skin, 73, pork, 76. Then we have the beef sirloin, 80 milligrams of um, cholesterol, chicken breast and skin, 82, oysters, um, 84 sardines, 120 shrimp, 165 beef kidneys, 329. Then we have beef liver, 410. I remember when I was growing up, I was not vegetarian. My mother will give me liver. I never liked it, but lots of cholesterol in there. Um, it was interesting because in our program in our clinic, there was one participant. Um, we run labs at the beginning and at the end of the program. And um, when she came after the program and saw her labs and her cholesterol and triglycerides were so low, she was just beaming of joy. She said, in my life, I have 
had my cholesterol and triglycerides, although she was just so happy. And she said, I've been telling everybody about this. And, and she says, but I wanted to cheat one day. She says, I just want it once. She says, and if I'm going to cheat with something, she says, I'm going to cheat with liver. She says, with onions, lots of onions. And she was just savoring it herself. And she said, but you get, she told me, uh, but you know what happened when we got there and we got the liver and we started to eat in it. It was the most disgusting thing I could ever taste. She was, it was just horrible for her because her taste buds actually change. And now she can uh, taste the natural plant-based foods that God has given for us. So praise God, we can t learn to taste good stuff. You know, the simple plant-based stuff that God ha has given us. Um, KVR, 500 milligrams, and beef brains, probably here in the US, those are not sell, but I know I, I'm from Mexico, and in Mexico there are street uh, um, little food stands that sell um, brain, um, beef brains tacos, mm -hmm. and people eat them. It's got 1,697 milligrams of cholesterol. It's just terrible, terrible, terrible. Yes. Um, other byproducts that are ha harmful for our arteries. There was a study done in monkeys, they were giving them, and um, my husband probably will have to help me on this one, this, how the study was done, um, but they gave the monkeys custards, right? All they gave them was custards. All what it is, it means uh, the mixture of milk, sugar, and um, eggs. That's all that they ate for how long? Two weeks. For two weeks, two weeks. And, and the result of the study was that the aortas were uh, very damaged. They started developing um, strokes, heart attacks, just two weeks of eating only custard. Well, they were, they were giving them only custards. We are not gonna eat custards every day, three times a day for two weeks, right? But the point is that it actually damaged the aortas and, 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 and the brain and all the system itself. Um, so pancake mixes. So the reason that they are harmful is because they, they again have milk, eggs, and sugar. So if you have a pancake mix that you want to buy, make sure you use um, soy milk or almond milk, and don't use eggs, just put a little bit of um, flax seed, or you can use um, oats, right? Uh, oat meal, and then that makes it, um, it, it will bind. Uh -huh. Right banana? A ripe banana, absolutely. Put it in there and you don't need to put eggs in there. Mm -hmm. You were about to say something? Okay. Other, other byproducts that are harmful for um, the brain are uh, Parmesan cheese and lard. Um, then uh, let me just read to you a um, quote from Ministry of Healing, page 201, um, paragraph 4. It says, especially harmful are the custards and puddings in which milk, eggs and sugar are the chief ingredient. The free use of milk and sugar together should be avoided. This was done written years and years and years and years ago, and it was also true. Now we are finding that, oh yes, it was true. We should not do that. So we can trust whatever God has already said in his word. I don't know if um, you have any questions um, or any comments you would like to share. I have a question. Yes, sir. On, on all the good foods, is it is it important to have organic food? Mm -hmm. That's my question. Yes, organic food. Would you like to? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. Okay. Uh, a lot of studies have been done on plant-based diets. And they haven't used organic. They just use whatever is available in the system. Uh, I think it's going to repeat that. It still shows that. Benefit. Yes. So the question was if 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 we should get organic only or or what's the difference between using organic or just a regular stuff. And my husband says that the studies that were, um, that have been done in the past, they, they didn't use organic and they still saw the benefits of just using plant-based. Would the same thing be true of genetically modified foods? I, I don't think that there are enough studies on that, so we don't know. Um, I, I personally would avoid them. Uh, yes. Of course, we know ideally we should grow our own food. Yes. But if we are not able uh, 
you know, trying to look for something that is not organic, not a time. You don't want to break your bank, of course, but you do need to budget somehow wisely to get the best you can. Yes. And then leave uh, leave the rest up to God. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There are um, many um, modified, let me just mention this really quick. The, our food, yes, is being, being modified a lot. And we have seen more and more uh, problems with, like, per se, gluten, where we're just saying people are intolerant to gluten, which didn't happen years and years past. Um, so it could be probably because of the type of um, wheat that we are growing now, than the wheat that was grown long ago. Now also the, the yeast that is being used to uh, make the bread is rapid yeast. That didn't exist back then. When they made, made their bread, it was take, take a whole day for the bread to, uh, to rise. It was not rapid uh, yeast. So that can also have an influence in the way that we are digesting our, our meals. I know there was a question here and back there. Pre-packaged soy products. Pre-packaged soy products. Right. So they're not ideal. And if you if you could if you learn to make soy products at home, that would be the ideal. Yes. But there's still be, there's still benefit. Yes, um, exactly. Okay. We're not talking about daily consumption. Uh, the ideal thing is to eat a variety of foods. That's, yes. That's why the lists are expensive. Yes. So that you make a menu and you eat this one day, this the next day, and you make sure you're getting a variety. A variety. Yes, exactly. A variety is what is the best. It's not like um, one solves everything. God gave us a whole rainbow of, of good things that we need to put all together, which will help in our in our health. Yeah. It also it it. it it doesn't help when we think of foods as med as, as 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 a pill. Right. We we cannot think of the, of a certain food as a pill. Exactly. And sometimes we take the way we take pills is we take them and we believe they're going to help us get better, but we don't yes. change anything else we do. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's that's not the right way to think about beneficial foods. Yes. Beneficial foods are are part of a whole package. The whole yes. package involves a changing in the way we, we eat. Yes. And so that's how they're most beneficial. Yes, exactly. Because eating a lot of one thing because it's good for us without changing anything else won't really help us that much. Yes, exactly. Like my husband's saying, it, one thing won't change everything. Like we learned that tofu has got a lot of uh, uh, nutrients for the brain. We're not going to eat only tofu, 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 because we know, you know, we need to have a variety of, you know, of, of, of fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, all that in our diet. Yes, ma'am. Is there really any difference between the fresh eggs, the farm chicken eggs, and the ones in the grocery? Probably what is the difference is that the hormones and stuff that they use in the in the um, in commercial trade versus the ones that you can get from home grown chickens that that they still gonna have cholesterol the and amount. and the same amount of cholesterol both of them so that's the problem because. Because if, if that starts affecting the, the 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 oxygen that gets to our brain, then our brain won't function correctly. Um, I just learned this past week a family of mine. Um, they did an MRI and they found that um, there was what, what can you say the definition again? Is the micro skin small, small vessel small vessel ischemic disease. ischemic disease, which is that. The, our, our brain, the, all the flowers of our neurons are in the outer part of our brain. And the inner part of our brain are all the stems. That's the way it is. The, the outer part of our brain is the gray, the gray matter. It's like, it's like looking at a field of, of uh, sunflowers from the top. From the top. So, okay. so the top is our, the, the sunflowers flowers, and the, the inner part of it is the, the accents or the stems. So what happened with that, fam that uh, family member of mine is that there was not enough oxygen that all those stems are uh, not functioning well or they were dying. So when, when that happens is that your neurons in your brain cannot function. You cannot think, you cannot, um, you can, but it's not optimal. It's difficult to make decisions. It's difficult to cope with stress. It's difficult to, to solve problems, difficult to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, when that process becomes severe, it's called vascular dementia. 
Look at that. So it will lead to vascular dementia. Your brain now no longer knows who you are, who other people is. It won't, it won't be able to tell when it's time to eat, if you eat or you didn't, or you know any of that. So bec just because there is not enough oxygen, and the reason that there is not enough oxygen is because cholesterol is being deposited in the inner part of the, um, the arteries or um, veins and blocking the, the blood that feeds oxygen to them. Yes. yes. The, the good news is that it can be reversed. Yes. It yes. Can be, uh, can be reversed Amen. By a, by a, it has been shown by a plant-based diet in a period of two to three years, it can be reversed. Yes. Um, there is a documentary many, many, many of you know. It's called Forks Over Knives. And the forks are forks that you use to eat your salads, and the knives, I would think it's just, you know, because when you eat meat, you need to use it's the, not, the forks. But it's, no, it's avoiding the knife of the surgeon. Exactly. So the knives is not preparing, like, eat your meat versus your salad. It's saying, eat your salad so you can avoid the, the, sur the surgery of your heart, right? So, or your brain or whatever. So there was this, um, in that documentary, and I invite you to um, watch it, um, there was this cardiologist who had the, um, the, the heart artery blocked. Three. Three, three. three of them. Three of his arteries were blocked. Three. Blocked completely. He a triple bypass. Triple, triple by bypass. So um, he decided, that he was going to change that. He says, I don't want to do surgery, anything. So he completely changed his diet from uh, meat-based to plant-based. Absolutely no animal products. Three years later, all, those, all that was cleared up. No need of bypass, no need of anything, because it can reverse. You know that when uh, Adam and, and, and Eve sinned, um, before that, God gave them to eat the fruits and everything that the tree gave and some of the seeds. But after he sinned, they sinned, God gave them all the leaves, all the, 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 the leaves of the, the field. So, because in them, you have a lot of um, antioxidants, a lot of good things that not only give nutrition, but repairs the body, repairs it. So, when these cardiologists did all this transition and put all that um, plant based diet, it was all reversed and all that cholesterol cleared up from his arteries. Yes. Yes. Is there a point where you can get cellulose conversion by this? This is uh, one time yes. um, we Yes. We will make it available, available for you. We don't have it in a, in a website or a, a place that uh, you can get it, but probably we can make it. Uh, yeah, I think you also mentioned books. Yes. Yes. There is a couple of books that you also can read. One of them is called um, um, uh, Defeat, uh, remind me, uh, the two books from Dr. Neil Nedley. One is. Oh, but I think you mean nutrition. But we also see it in, in those books, isn't it? Uh, the Pressure the, the Way Out. Pressure the Pressure the way, out. the way Out. And yes. The Lost Art of Thinking. The Lost Art of Thinking, that's. Um, these two and there's another one. It's proof positive, proof positive, and you can find much more information than what we presented today here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Uh